I think Patrick Queen pretty much just confirmed that he is not going to be with the Baltimore Ravens next year. And you know what? So you can develop your own interpretation of what he had to say. Let's have a listen. I mean, yeah, of course. You know, this is where I started it at. So um, it would be nice to come back. But at the same time, you know, I, just, I just got to do what's best for me, do what's best for my family. But, um, and then they got to do what's best for them on the other side, too, as well. So, um, you know, wherever that leads to, you know, it's, it's up to God. How, how do you plan to approach that process? Just pray on it. Um, try to do too much myself, too much thinking myself or with other people. Like that. A lot of worry starts happening and stuff. So I'm just praying on it to God, whatever happens. How pleased are you with? I mean, you had a great season. You know, and played at such a high level. How how pleased are you to deliver that kind of season? You know, obviously in the contract year. Yeah, uh, I wish I could get a little bit better uh, with like a turnover or something yesterday. I think that's my only re only regret is not being able to get the ball at least once to uh, give our offense another chance. So. He taught me a lot. He taught me how to lead. He taught me how to, you know, be who you're supposed to be on the field uh, and then off the field as well. Um, it's just it's so much stuff he taught me, man. I could go on for days, bro. Just, just a great dude, great guy, great teammate, everything that you want in the leader. And um, you know, it's definitely stuff that I'll take with me for the rest of my life, even if I'm not here. Um, that he taught me that the dude was the reason why he got what he got and why he's here. So just, just all the respect to him. Patrick, you're one of the many free agents have you guys talked about how this team could look a lot different next year? Yeah, that's, that was the whole talk. That's why we wanted to get to where we wanted to get to. So um, we definitely talked about it already. And, um, everybody already knew. So that's why we yeah. definitely things a lot. Patrick, given that, um, how long was it going to take for you to get over, especially given the uncertainty and these opportunities being as there as they are? Takes probably the whole offseason, honestly. So that was a lot to unpack in that clip. And real quick, shout out to Karita C. Park. She has been covering the Ravens for a while, and she is where we got that video from. So thank you for everything that you do uh, with covering the team. Uh, but with Patrick Queen, he said a lot in that clip. He, he talked about how he has to do what's best for him and his family. And that is a dead giveaway right there. That is it's about that bread. It's about the money. He, he is trying to go get paid and make a very handsome amount of money. And we cannot be mad at him at all for that. Because we know that the NFL, it stands for not for long. And with Patrick Queen, he's had a four-year career thus far. A lot of people can't say that. A lot of people don't even make it out after one year. NFL, it's, it's the top 1%. These are the best players in the world. So not only has he had a four-year career thus far that's getting ready to continue, but while he's in the 1% that actually make it to the NFL, he made all pro honors as well. So his bag got even more fatter, man. It's like he, he's going to make a lot of money. But something that he said, he talked about while he said he got to do what's best for him and his family. But he also said that the Ravens, they got to do what's best for them, too. And again, another dead giveaway like, hey, I, I get it. It's about the business. I got to take care of me. Ravens got to take care of them. He knows. He gets it. He gets it. Patrick Queen has been in this business for four years, and he understands it. Like, when, when he had his fifth-year option decline, that's why I, I really got a, a big-time respect for Patrick Queen, how he handled literally everything. He had his fifth-year option declined. Uh, he saw the Baltimore Ravens trade for Roquan Smith, and then after they trade, they paid a Roquan Smith in the same year that they traded for Roquan Smith, gave him a hundred million dollar contract. And you sitting there like, man, I've been here since 2020. I was a first round pick. What what's going on here? They just bring this guy in and they pay him, and like, hey, what's up? And again, they declined his fifth year option, and then they went and drafted Trenton Simpson. So Patrick Queen, right then and there, he could have been like, you know what? I want out. Get me out of here. Trade me. And he would have had a million different reasons why that would have been acceptable from his point of view. Like, hey, no, trade me. I don't want to be here anymore. I don't want to be on this team. They don't value me. I, I, let me go somewhere else where I'm more appreciated. But he ain't do that. 
Well, at least not that we heard of, but he didn't do that. Patrick Queen not only stayed with the Baltimore Ravens, and then I remember even when they drafted Trent Simpson, I remember him, him tweeted, he tweeted, sheesh. So he knew. He, he knows the game. He understands the business, but you ain't see Patrick Queen walking around pouting. You ain't hear him in pressers walking around whining. You ain't see him in interviews walking around complaining. Nope. He just came through, and he played his game, and he had a phenomenal season this year. And he earned himself a lot of money. And again, for, for somebody to have gone through all of that at the workplace, through all those little trials and tribulations at the workplace, all those, the stuff that's right in your face too, and to show out like he did this year, that says a lot about Patrick Queen. Something else that he talked about, uh, he was asked, what, are, what did you take from Roquan Smith? What did you learn from Roquan Smith? And he talked about a lot of things in past tense. He talked about how Roquan Smith taught him a lot, but he said he taught him how to be a leader. See, that answer is great because Patrick Queen, while that, I'm sure that is true, uh, Patrick Queen is also positioning himself to be a leader on whoever his next team is because you know that they're watching. They watch all that stuff. They listen to all that stuff. They pay attention to all of that stuff. So what he's doing is letting them know like, hey, he showed me how to be a leader. I'm ready to lead whatever team is next for me. I, I'm, I'm ready to step up and be that guy for wherever I end up being next. Now, um, with Patrick Queen, with him expected to be gone from the Baltimore Ravens, it's not official yet, but uh, yeah, we pretty much feel like it's going there. I, I looked around to see what some fans were saying about PQ, how they feel about a Patrick Queen. And I saw somebody say, Chargers fan said, time out. Patrick Queen is a free agent. If the Ravens don't pay him, then the Chargers should try everything. So if that ended up being the case, he would go from one hardball to another. Then this one said, in my opinion, the best offseason to get the Raiders in the playoffs, re-sign Josh Jacob to a team-friendly deal, trade for Justin Fields, uh, draft Newton with the first, sign Patrick Queen. So Raiders fans interested in bringing Patrick Queen aboard. But this one right here, this is the most interesting one to me. This came from Ike Packer's podcast. He said, Will Patrick Queen take Devondre Campbell's spot on the Packers? Patrick Queen is a game-changing linebacker, free agent who gets sacks, forced fumbles, and makes the occasional interception. He runs a 4-5, 40-yard dash, and he will be 25 years old entering the 2024 season. So, um, with that being said, uh, the reason why I say that's the most interesting to me is because of this. And this is the report from Tom Pelissero. He said, the Packers requested to interview Ravens inside linebacker coach Zach Orr for Green Bay's defensive coordinator position. Per source, Orr is a former Ravens linebacker who is, a projected, uh, who is projected as a defensive coordinator very soon. Orr has been a close lieutenant to Mike McDonald in Baltimore. So imagine that because you know that a lot of times in free agency, if a certain coach leaves, if, if, a, if a position coach leaves and goes to another team, players in that position, a lot of times they often follow. So could we see Patrick Queen with the Green Bay Packers this offseason? Hey, it's a thought. It's a thought. And it, it could end up being a reality. Now, speaking of coaches that could possibly be on the move, because Ravens, again, th this should have been the year, and that's something that Patrick Queen talked about. Uh, they talked, to, they asked him, like, how different could the Baltimore Ravens look next year? And Patrick Queen said, that's why we wanted to win it all this year. That, that, that's why we felt like this should have been the year, because things could be a lot different uh, on this team. And that's true, because their staff, not only is the personnel going to be a lot different, but their coaching staff could be a lot different, too. This also from Tom Pelissero said, Ravens wide receivers coach Greg Lewis will interview today for the Saints. Offensive coordinator job, per source. Lewis, the former NFL wide receiver, uh, won two Super Bowls on Andy Reid's staff in Kansas City before joining Baltimore this past season. So another coach that could end up being out of there. Now, another one, and this one also from the Packers. This came from Ian Rappaport. He said, the Packers requested to speak with Ravens secondary coach Denard Wilson for their vacant defensive coordinator job. Source said, he's also interviewing with the Titans today for their defensive coordinator job. And the Rams and Giants have talked to him as well. Raven staff is, again, nothing official yet, but they're getting a lot of interest. A whole lot of interest, understandably, because, yeah, they were, they were a great team this year. They were a phenomenal team this year. 
Uh, and then last but not least, while those guys got interest, this one became official. This came from Adam Schefter. said, Chargers finalized the deal to hire Joe Hortiz as their new general manager late, late last night. Per sources, the deal is now official. Hortiz goes from one hardball to another. And Joe Hortiz, I remember him from every, um, the Ravens presses, the end of the year presses. He would be sitting them right up there with EDC. With Bashadi, with Harbaugh, he would be right there in that seat. And he would answer a lot of the questions, too. So he obviously was a very high-ranking front office person with the Baltimore Ravens. But now he gets to flap his wings with the charges. So congrats to him. But back to Patrick Queen, I feel like we might as well give our early congrats to him. Because I just feel like that is a wrap for him. It's been a great uh, time great four years watching Patrick Queen just really watching his growth he came and he's still super young he's still super super young but he came in this young dude at inside linebacker and and this was a new position for him because uh, at LSU he was more so the Robin instead of Batman uh, and him being a starting inside linebacker his last year at LSU was pretty new for him so he was fresh. He was fresh. But then to be, become a first-round draft pick by the Baltimore Ravens and had to have to step into that, that's a lot. That's a lot of pressure, as we know. Because no matter who you are, no matter where you're from, if you're an inside linebacker for the Baltimore Ravens, especially as a first-round draft pick, there is so much pressure on you because, sorry, Ray Lewis. Ray Lewis. And it's not fair to any of these inside linebackers, but that's just what it is. Ray Lewis, had, had, by his play, everything that he did, he put so much pressure on every single inside linebacker for the Baltimore Ravens, every single one. And um, C.J. Mosley, there's a lot of pressure on him. Patrick Queen, a lot of pressure on him. And it just, it continued. But Roquan Smith, I know a lot of people have compared Roquan Smith to Ray Lewis uh, with his play and then with his attitude as well. But anyway, um, Patrick Queen, he started off a bit shaky. Um, there were a lot of naysayers and whatnot. There was a lot of people who just doubted Patrick Queen. It was like, ah, nah, this guy, he ain't it. But he really started to turn that corner, uh, especially in his in the second year he did, but definitely in his third year too. And he was really playing a whole lot better. He was playing with a lot more confidence. Uh, and he talked about it too. I remember he talked about how he used to try to do everybody else's job instead of just focusing on his, and he felt like that kind of slowed him down. That kind of messed him up. But year three was a big year for him, and I know his parents even talked about it. They said, hey, hey, every year three for Patrick Queen, that's when he really turns the corner. That's when he really gets it, and that's when he really takes off, and he started doing that. Uh, but then during year three, he started taking off. He started playing a lot better, uh, and then the Baltimore Ravens, they traded for a Roquan Smith. Uh, so while Patrick Queen had already been playing a lot better, they added Roquan Smith, and he just continued to play uh, gr great, great football. And Roquan Smith helped make his job uh, even easier. Uh, and then in this year, and we talked about it, everything that he went through this offseason and everything that he had to deal with, everything that was literally thrown in his face. But he showed up and showed out. So whoever gets Patrick Queen next year, uh, they're going to be getting a really good player. Uh, they're going to be getting somebody who has been there, done that, somebody who has learned, somebody who has been through all the ups and downs uh, as an NFL player and somebody who can help teach other people, too, how to have perseverance.